If you have Home Assistant, then you also probably have HACS or Home Assistant Community Store. Today I will be showing you 5 of my favorite frontend and integrations from HACS. We'll start in a couple of seconds. One of the first things I do after I install clean version of Home Assistant is to also install HACS, because you never know when you will need some specific integration that is currently not available directly in Home Assistant. So all of my systems, this is my main setup, recording setup, And one additional setup that I have, have HACS installed. Depending on my use case, not all HACS components are active in each of those instances. For example, this one doesn't even have Python or NetDemon section enabled. Also, in my main setup, for each new addition to HACS that arrives, I check each and every repository. And the ones that are left here are things that I still need to check or integrate in my setup. So this is a wish list, more than a list of new components. As you can see, I do have some, maybe you even have much more integrations installed. But I will tell you today about two integrations and three front-end additions that I like the most. Let's start with first one. This one is called Authenticated. And it's very easy to set up an integrated Home Assistant, but it also can improve on your security. What it does, if a new IP is detected, it will be added to the IP authenticated YAML file with a dot in front, which means that the file itself is not directly or immediately visible. And you will get this information for each of the IP addresses. You will receive information that this IP address is location. The location itself, of course, doesn't have to be correct because it is using reverse DNS lookup for that. Hostname, last authenticated, previous authenticated, and the region. This can help you pinpoint on possible suspicious activities. Although, don't forget, this will not block. This will just tell you who authenticated and who is accessing with the correct username and password your system. If you want to get extra protection, you have to enable IP ban. This is the standard built-in functionality of Home Assistant. This one will ban all the users from trying to access Home Assistant if they fail to authenticate or fail to provide correct username and password, I think for three or five times. The installation of Authenticated is pretty easy and straightforward. Just click on plus, explore and download repositories, search for Authenticated, click on it, and of course, press on download this repository with HACS. If you want to use beta version, you can check this box, but I really would recommend that you stick with the main or released versions. Click on download, and that's it. Don't forget that each of the HACS components is not loaded until you first restart your Home Assistant. Yes, you will always see this pending restart here, but just in case, I'm telling you not to forget to restart your Home Assistant. And after you restarted your Home Assistant, and yes, you have to first restart your Home Assistant for this platform to become available in Home Assistant. If you would try to create configuration entry in your sensors YAML file, you would fail on the verification of the YAML files. So first restart system, then in a configuration YAML file under sensors, or in sensors file, just add following. Platform authenticated, enable notification false. Why did I disable notifications? If you would leave this default or enable notifications with true, you would receive each and every notification as a persistent notification home assistant. And remember, that can be a lot of persistent notifications. So I myself am not currently looking into receiving each and every authenticated notification on my mobile phone or my computer. I'm only interested in logging of the data. If we go down, you can see a long list of all authenticated users that are accessing my Home Assistant. And in the last two years, or something a bit less than two years, I have more than 7,500 lines in this YAML file. Next HACS integration that really helps me keep my system clean is Watchman. 
Watchman is really a great integration that is helping me keep my system clean. It can of course not solve all your issues, but you can use it to pinpoint some possible problems. For example, if an entity changes name, or is not available anymore, to check if there are any automations, scripts, etc. that are still using that non-existing or change name entity. And yeah, I did find a bunch of them. I still have some entities that show up in the reports, but now that number is something that I can manage without an issue. So let me first show you how to install it, and then we will look at the report you get from Watchman. In order to install Watchman, once again, press on explore and download repositories, type watchman, and of course, download this repository with HACS. Once again, either select version you want to install, but I really do recommend that you leave the default one and also do not enable beta and click on download. In order to continue the installation of the watchman, what we have to do is restart our home assistant. So let me quickly restart this third instance of home assistant I'm using. While system is restarting, let me take this opportunity and thank everybody who is supporting me on the YouTube channel and has become YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to everybody who watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below. And if you did like this video, don't forget to give me a like. This not just means really a lot to me, but it also helps with the YouTube algorithms. Thank you. Now that Watchman has been activated by restarting Home Assistant, let's go to Settings. Yes, Settings, Integrations. Click on Add Integration and type Watchman. Sure, it is HACS integration, but it has been added to the Home Assistant integrations page. Click on it and let's configure it. Let's press finish. We can press now configure to configure it and either leave everything as is or customize to your needs. I will not be going through all of the configuration options, but let me tell you about few that I use myself. I myself am not using Notify service, but you can use notification service to get notified if there is a new report available or when it's ready. Included folders list. Default one is config. I don't know if you don't have to type it or not. I've never even tried. I always write config. But for example, if you have additional folder, you can use comma separated list. So that's folder number two. You can customize the header, report location. So report will be located in the configuration folder. You can create a list of either ignored entities and services or ignored entity states. For example, I'm using this to ignore my ESP home folder and also Zigbee to MQTT folder. Message chunk in bytes is used with a combination of notification services. For example, if you're using Telegram, it can send you the list of all entities that are not available or that there are issues with. And since there is a limit on Telegram and other notification services, you can specify here what is the maximum size of this message chunk. We already mentioned ignored files, which is similar to the ignored entities and entity states, but ignored files can also be ignored folders. This is information on customizing the reports column width, and here we have delay for sensors initialization. If you like, you can use add friendly names to the report, which can help you identify the entities that are not available or that have issues, and also use parse dashboard, which can detect if there are any entities that are not available and that are required for the Lovelace or UI to work properly. And click on submit. There are a couple of ways on how you can run it. You can create a schedule and automation for it to run, but I really am not interested to run it every day or every week. I only want to run it when I have free time to fix all the problems. So what I do, I go to developer tools, services, watchman report, and click on call service. If everything is correct, if we now go to file editor, you will see a new file called watchman report. And it will list you all the missing services or missing entities. For example, it says that light turn on and light turn off is missing in the blueprints. And I don't care about that one since I'm not using blueprints. But there are also three that I care about. And these are the ones here. Zone lightning zone is missing. Sensor blitz or to lighting distance and azimuth are also missing. 
but because I know that these two sensors are created only after lightning is detected, I'm okay with that. But on the other hand, what I have to do is check and see why zone.lightning zone is missing. Yeah, but my main setup does have a bit longer list. And it's much shorter than it was. I think I had hundreds of entities that were missing or were unknown. So I fixed that one. And this now is just a typical thing where some of the sensors are currently not sending the data. And this can usually happen after I restart my Home Assistant until all the sensors are pulled and all the values land up in Home Assistant. After two integrations, let's now talk about front-end improvements from HACS that I would definitely recommend you to check out. There are much more front-end things installed in my main setup, but this time, as I said, I want to show you three of them. Let's start with Notify Card. Notify Card can simplify your life. If you would, for example, need to send notification and you do not have card for that, or are using something else, it can be a bit longer process than with the notify card. So, for example, if I wouldn't have notification card installed, I would have to go to developer tools, services, select a notification platform that I want to use, and then fill in here all the necessary fields. With the notify card, this process is simplified. So let's first install it. In frontend, press on explore and download and type notify and select notify card. Download this repository and download, reload. And notify card is now installed. If we go to overview, we can now add this notification card. Press on three dots, edit dashboard, add card. And for the configuration of the notify card, let's copy this here. Type will be custom notify card, target will be living room TV. Well, in this case, it's living room TV, but we have to adapt this and specify the platform that we want to use. Label is notify TV, card title is send notification and notification is new notification. Let me copy this one. And before we create card in Home Assistant, also take note of some of the additional examples. For example, you can push this same notification to multiple notification platforms. You can also specify notification title as input field and it will allow you to specify the title of the message and message too. If you want to hard code the message, you can fill in the input field. And also, for example, for the Amazon smart speaker, you can use type announce. Let's go back to my UI. Manual. And let's configure this. Don't forget to change the target to whatever notification services you want to use. And by the way, you do not have to use just notification service here. You can also use a script. But if you are using script, you have to type in script dot and the name of the script that you will be using. Let's press save. If I would want to send notification now, I would just type here. Please subscribe and press the send. And as you can see on your screen, you would receive notification on whatever notification platform you've sent this notification to. Auto Entities is the second front-end improvement from the HACS that I want to show you today. It is a very complex card that will help you to customize the entities that are listed in that card according to whatever needs you have. One of the things I'm using this card is to track the lights that are currently on. This is the configuration for my auto entities card. I'm looking at property entity domain where value is light and entity state is in the value on. You can sort things here. You can play with the card look and that way you can really customize on how the card will look and what will be presented inside the card. If any of the lights here is switched off, for example, let's turn off dining room lights the list will automatically update and list only those lights that are currently really on in my apartment. And this one really helps me to see either if there is an issue for the light, for example, yeah, somebody has turned off this light via the switch. So how do you install this auto entity card? Once again, explore, auto entities, download this repository, download, and reload for this to be enabled. I will not be going into details on how to configure this card because as you can see, there are a lot of options, filters, special options, 
And yeah, I really do recommend that you read this long documentation and start with something simple. And then of course improve as you learn and figure out other stuff. And last front-end improvement from HACS that I want to show you today is simple thermostat. And this is probably also the most asked thing. Whenever I release video on my home assistant, people ask what am I using for the thermostat. Sure, home assistant has thermostat, but if you compare this thermostat and this one here, this one does have a bit more information and it can look overwhelming, but it also allows you to manipulate your thermostat much easier from within UI. So yes, this is simple thermostat and it doesn't look simple at all. And how do we install it? Explore, simple thermostat. And yes, I'm using this bigger mode, but you can also use this compact mode. Press on download repository, download and reload your UI. Click on add card, type here simple. And yes, it's available directly from the list and select any of the climate entities. Of course, you can tweak it depending on your needs. And if you need help with the configuration, click on configuration options and it will open you documentation. And in documentation, you will have a long list of things that you can do and customize with this simple thermostat. Of course, HACS has tons of other integrations, front-end improvements and automations for Nedaemon or Python that really deserve to be talked about. But unfortunately, I talk too much and even five things from HACS, yeah, results in a very long video. I really would like to hear what are some of your favorite integrations, front-end improvements and automations from HACS or even the ones that are currently not available directly through HACS, but you can add repository and install through HACS. If you have any kind of a comment or a question, you can always leave comment down in a comment section below or use link from the description of the video and go to the Discord server. If you did enjoy this video, please give me a like. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates and of course streams. And if everything goes according to plan, yes, next Saturday there will be a stream. And I will be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.